So, I just got home to Canada after being away for seven months in Australia to find out my mother and stepdad donated all of my clothes and pretty much everything I owned to the Salvation Army through in garbage. I really need advice so if someone could please read my story I would really appreciate it. I live in British Columbia, Canada. I needed to put my items in storage when I was planning on traveling Australia, so I asked my mom and stepdad to help me move out of my apartment and store my items and they offered to help me if I paid them something like $100 for the gas. I agreed, stepdad has a work truck. I had packed about half of everything and they came over and helped me pack the rest, along with my friends. I put all of my clothes into garbage bags, about 8-10 bags. We moved all my necessities, including mattress, duvet, duvet cover, desk, bed frame, everything I owned, into the work truck and I told them to just put all my stuff under their house in the basement. I was originally going to donate some bags of clothes but I didn't have enough time to sort through them so we donated some furniture, my couches, to the Salvation Army. They wouldn't accept one of them so my stepdad said he would go to the dump and throw it out. I told them I'd deal with everything else when I get back in a year or so, they have a lot of storage space. Fast forward, I had to come home early due to COVID, so after about 30 hours of travel I arrived back in Canada to my parents' house. I went under the house because I wanted to wear a big comfy sweater that I missed. I only brought a suitcase of summer clothes to Australia because I knew it would be much warmer there. I go under the house and can't find any bags of clothing. I asked my mom where she put them and she said I'm not sure, whatever isn't there was donated. What? They never said they were going to donate anything, as I asked them to keep all the boxes and bags. I asked further and she said that my roommate told them they could be donated. I immediately messaged him and he said that he heard them joking about just donating the items when I left. And he said he chimed in and said that he himself got rid of all of his stuff and joked around with them. I told her that excuse was bullshit and they could have had any any type of communication with me and I would told them to not get rid of the items. My mom then said that some of the boxes were ripped and the bags had holes in them so she got rid of them. I continued to search and couldn't find much of anything. They got rid of my duvet, mattress, both of my memory foams pillows, drawing books with all my drawing supplies, VR headset, Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, including photos and memories that I did not upload, $500 headphones, Google Nexus, iPod, Nintendo 3DS, stereo system, they were all gone along with all my clothes. They would not have sold my items, they aren't intelligent enough to figure out prices and sell them. So they just threw out or donated them because they didn't want to deal with them. What they did keep was reorganized into boxes and they labeled themselves. They kept DVDs, CDs, my Xbox 360, my computer and monitor in a bag with some jackets and shoes and then pots and pans. I am beyond heartbroken. I had so many sentimental items from traveling and clothing items and if I knew they were going to do this I would have called literally anyone else to store my things. I am talking to them tomorrow since my stepdad comes home, he works in a different city, and I literally don't know what to do. I am in 14 day isolation so I haven't been talking with my mother. I know my stepdad will try and shove it back in my face by saying oh you left us with too much shit, but they didn't say one word to me that they didn't want to deal with it. I am a grown 25 year old man and they treat me and my belongings like I'm a child. Do I tell them to repay me for all of the items or talk to a lawyer about this? I am so nervous about the talk tomorrow. My stepdad is quite manipulative and gets rid of things that clog up space for him. And my mom is a pushover and gets stressed at the smallest things and is very emotionally immature so tomorrow is going to be very difficult. I don't have any intention of talking to my parents ever again after this. I trusted them and they completely betrayed that trust. All it would have taken is a phone call and I could have gotten someone to pick up my stuff or hired a moving company to put it in a storage locker. I feel empty and like I have nothing now. I was super into fashion and had so many expensive designer items, professional workwear and winter clothes that were donated and things collected over the years from traveling concerts festivals. Can anyone please give me advice on how to deal with this? I'm overwhelmed at the moment and am quite exhausted from crying so much. User Jocelyn's so if the value of your lost items is under $5k, or you're willing to abandon the remaining portion after $5k, 
you can commence an action entirely online in the BC Civil Resolution Tribunal. I'm not sure how COVID has affected the CRT, but since it's entirely online, including the decision-making process, I wouldn't be surprised if it's still operating. If the value is over $5 K and you're not willing to abandon the rest of the value, you'll need to commence an action in small claims once the courts open up again. User Fairmaiden 34. The only way to force them to pay is by taking them to court. It'll likely be a small claims court matter which means that the system is designed to do it yourself. You can hire a lawyer if you wish for part or all of the process. You're going to need to value what was tossed. You will also need proof of value at the time it was tossed, i.e. account for depreciation. But I would probably speak with them first. Let them know you'll have to take them to court if it doesn't work out. Now, this is not legal advice. I can't believe this is real but, I'm living at an apartment complex in Ohio. Current landlord has purchased the apartment building from the previous landlord and has been owning and making demands of the tenants for a few months now. One of the demands was that we contact the internet service provider to have them relocate the cables they've ran into the apartment because they are an eyesore. I told him I was not given an option for where or how the cabling entered the building, the cabling was there when I moved in, and he should contact the ICE to discuss moving the cables. As multiple tenants' connections run into the building at the same spot, I thought this would be the better option as he could oversee the new cable installation to bring up any concerns and would keep the ICE from having to make multiple trips to relocate cabling. Well, today, he stopped by the apartments and physically cut the ICE cables on the outside of the building where they entered, thus killing internet access to the building. This has also affected my work as I'm supposed to be working remote, but that is impossible with no internet. I've contacted them and they will be out this afternoon to reconnect it. I'm looking for advice on what I need to do to make sure I don't have to pay the ICE for the reconnection or to be reimbursed if I'm charged. Also, is it legal for the landlord to cut the internet connection to my apartment? Update, the ICE came out and said they could relocate and reinstall the cables but they require the building owner's permission to do so. We contacted the landlord to ask him to contact Spectrum in order to give them permission and he refused. He said he will not be contacting any ISPs. At this point, it seems like he's just trying to push all of the current tenants out of the building so he can raise the rent as he's done on the vacant apartments. User Potential Aurelius. Practically, you should get a 4G hotspot. They're not too expensive. What your landlord did was a violation of ORC Section 5321.15a. You should call a lawyer to see if it's worth having a lawyer for. Regardless, you can sue for lost wages, emotional distress, etc. Although that section does not allow punitive damages in and of itself, you may be entitled to punitive damages if you can establish actual malice, fraud or insult. His written communications will serve as good proof for this. Use a card cat Sakura. I know but in reference to your update saying that you believe he is trying to force you out of the lease. Ohio law is clear. Effective date. The 11th of April 1974 5321.15 acts of landlord prohibited if residential property involved. A. No landlord of residential premises shall initiate any act, including termination of utilities or services, exclusion from the premises, or threat of any unlawful act against a tenant or a tenant whose right to possession has terminated, for the purpose of recovering possession of residential premises, other than as provided in chapters 1923, 5303, and 5321 of the revised code, comma c, I landlord who violates this section is liable in a civil action for all damages caused to a tenant, or to a tenant whose right to possession has terminated, together with reasonable attorney's fees. Broadband internet is not federally recognized as a utility but here is Ohio's legal definition of public utilities. Ohio Revised Code 4905.02 I recommend sending a certified letter, and keep a copy, that outlines the landlords and your own actions up until now, 
the legal implications and a statement that if the issue is not resolved that you intend to take legal action including damages, lost wages and legal fees. You can have a lawyer send a demand letter but that'll cost you. User Thomas Paramedic. If the ICE provider required the property owner to pay for the cost of the equipment and labor to run it, then he can pretty much do whatever he wants with it. If not, then it is owned by the ICE company and he can get into a lot of trouble for that. Back in the day when people would end up cutting fiber optic lines, even by accident, they were charged thousands of dollars for the repair. The only way out was if the lines were underground and the company was required to come out and mark where their location was and that turned out to be wrong. I would call the ice pup and explain the situation and let them go to town on him. You might want to call the city as well. User someone somewhere. Even then, possibly not. The contracts here in NZ have you signing over ownership of buried condit TTC when you get connect, even if you bought and buried them. User one shades one. I work with cable companies like Spectrum, Comcast, AT&T etc. It likely is the ISP's property. Most ISPs claim responsibility for all cables running into homes, businesses and buildings. They pay for install, maintenance, replacement and utility locates when work is needing to be done in the area. I've seen this before where someone cuts a cable to get the attention of the provider due to response time. He will likely flip the bill for those cables. If it's coax my guess is $300 500 per cable as that's what they charge us if we damage one. Not a lawyer obviously but I assume if you can prove loss of income due to no internet you could take him to small claims too. It looks like it is possible to buy my love subscribe to Helios for 3000 Helios hugs.